Hello and welcome back to ProFetchy's YouTube channel where we're talking about all things digital transformation. Within today's video, we're going to be taking a quick look at artificial intelligence, blockchain technology and the internet of things. My name is Lachlan with ProFetchy and let's get started. I suppose it could be said that the importance of technology in business is only growing and I suppose the rapid growth of technology is actually making it difficult for business leaders, for businesses, for CEOs to keep on top of and keep aware of exactly what technology is flourishing or even being established around us. But I suppose to mention it is undeniable that is probably the one of the best ways to actually achieve a competitive advantage within different industries in terms of looking at what productivity and performance can be improved through the adoption of new technology software features or systems. And I suppose with more and more technologies emerging around us, the importance of this is only growing, where business leaders and CEOs are expected to exploit opportunities through technology, where they can use these to their own advantage and achieve an edge over their competitors. So I suppose us as businesses are expected to grow, to improve and to be innovative in different ways and technology is the way to actually do this. Through leveraging it and using it to our own advantage, we can improve our efficiency and grow the business rapidly. So let's take a look at the advantages and disadvantages of technology in business so you can have an understanding exactly how it's going to impact your business in different ways. So in terms of advantages there, in terms of actually improved productivity, the likes of software systems such as project management software systems has allowed uh, businesses to use better use of their resources basically through the likes of planning and scheduling of their employees. So systems such as Teamwork, Monday.com, Asana, ClickUp are all types of systems that allows you to make better use of your resources and time effectively where you can allocate tasks, schedule your employees and make more efficient use of your resources all round basically. Another is communication. So I'm sure you're well used to the likes of Zoom, Microsoft Teams or even like the likes of online chat boxes. But basically all these different communication systems allows you to either communicate with, communicate with your staff or even your customers no matter where they are in the world. So it's become more effective in the likes of remote working as well. In terms of efficiency, we can see more and more with the likes of artificial intelligence, which we'll have a wee look at in further depth afterwards, where the likes of technologies within this area allows businesses to automate their processes and actually speed up their workflow of the business as well to help improve their overall efficiency levels. We can also see technology being leveraged by companies to improve their overall customer experience, giving them the ability to actually purchase products and services online easier, or even have um, communication levels built between the business and customer to improve their overall satisfaction levels. In terms of security then, technology can offer large organizations an ability or a feature or a system to, I suppose, hold large amounts of confidential data in relation to either their clients or customers or even employees, which ensures a high level of data security measures within the workplace. And then towards the bottom, in terms of decision making, a lot of businesses have technologies which are built to analyze large amounts of data and information at a given time, which actually allows them to make more informed decisions. So with this time, they can then strategize towards the future development of their business, and I suppose use this technology to their advantage, like any other technology softwares which is in the market. And that sort of summarizes the advantages of technologies in terms of you know how they can actually impact your business on a positive side of things. On the other hand though, in terms of disadvantages, the first one that we can consider is in terms of expensive so I think one of the biggest pitfalls when it comes to technology is actually the price of technology on the market today and how much it actually costs to implement it within your own business environment. And I suppose this is probably the reasoning behind the gap of competitiveness between the likes of the larger organizations which currently exist compared to the smaller firms where larger organizations will deem it less of a risk to implement technology and maybe even fail on technology as they will have the resources in terms of the financial resources to um, evolve and continue to perform within their own environment. So the second point there is in terms of actually becoming dependent on a piece of technology. And this could actually leave businesses at a very high risk in terms of if they are completely dependent on a piece of technology and it either you know fails or shuts down at any time of the day, how can they plan around this? How can they continue to meet customer demand through this time period? 
And I suppose one way of actually doing this is through creating scenario planning in terms of carrying out a scenario plan analysis and looking at your business and looking at your technology and understand if it fails, how can we have the plans in place to continue to meet customer demand and grow the business. And I have created a video on scenario plan analysis and how you could use it to effectively improve your business and create scenario plans for the future. If you want some guidance and support in around this, contact myself and I'd be more than happy to share this video with you. So of course technology has you know massive implications in terms of improving productivity and performance of a business but at the same time it actually can affect employee satisfaction levels in terms of maybe technology either maybe replacing their job roles or perhaps you know having an effect on their um, roles and responsibilities within a company and this can have an act on effect on the likes of their productivity levels or even see them leaving the company in the future depending on how satisfied they are with the overall change. So this also has a link with the likes of employee skills and talent in terms of new software systems that are being introduced to actually having an effect on certain roles and responsibilities in terms of reducing their need, which also has a negative impact on the likes of employee skills and talent over time. As well as this, the likes of online communication systems can also have an effect on the social side of employees and impacting how they're actually socialising inside and outside of the workplace. As well with technology, you also have run a risk of cyber security threats. So although there is technology in place which has developed a whole large amount of data, personal data, um, through the likes of their clients and customers, businesses can still be left open to cyber security attacks, which leaves them at risk to losing you know, their customer or client data, and also leaves them with the potential to actually face legal consequences in the future as well. So making sure you have them place, the plans in place to mitigate this risk is going to be very, very important then. So I think we've talked enough about the importance of technology and how it can impact your business today. So let's take a look at artificial intelligence, blockchain technology and the internet of things to get an understanding of exactly how you could implement it and use it to your own advantage today. So this brings us on to looking at artificial intelligence or AI as it's known. And I think this technology feature can be considered as the number one technology application used by businesses worldwide today. And I suppose this is probably down to its ability to automate business processes, provide you with effective data, insights and information, and improve your overall efficiency levels in terms of your internal aspect of your business. And I truly believe this piece of technology can be used by any business within any industry, as it's been established in many different industries such as the healthcare sector, the education sector and even the manufacturing sector so no matter where you find yourself in terms of what industry you operate within AI can be used to your own advantage. So what type of technologies are we actually talking about when it comes to AI? So I think in terms of actually recently established artificial intelligence technologies we have the likes of ChatGPT. Developed by OpenAI this technology feature is actually set up as a language based model trained to analyze large amounts of data and deliver any of their users a conversational style response to their specific questions or queries. So this AI bot is set up in a way to deliver you fast paced responses to any of your queries or requests, allowing you to gather information and feedback towards any part of your business. So I think applications such as this offer opportunity for businesses to make better use of their time, where the artificial intelligence software system can produce data at a rapid pace, which in return allows business leaders to use their time more, more effectively and actually focus on the internal aspect of their business. And I think one of the positive things with AI is the platform's ability to learn from data and improve performance. So this can assure businesses that their business is likely to grow through adopting this type of technology. So now we understand exactly what it is, let's talk about some of the ways you can use AI to your own advantage. So let's say you find yourself within the manufacturing industry. Artificial intelligence is actually built in a way to predict and prevent equipment failures. So AI can be used to analyse data from sensors and other sources to predict when equipment is likely to fail and proactively schedule maintenance to prevent costly downtime. It can also be used to optimise supply chains. So AI can be used to analyse data on supplier performance, transportation routes and inventory levels to optimise supply chain operations and reduce their costs. On the other hand, you may be set up as a consultancy firm 
where the likes of automating tasks is an AI feature that could be used to your own advantage. So AI can be used to actually automate tasks that are time consuming and repetitive, such as data entry, consumer service inquiries and inventory ma management. And this will allow you to free up time for your employees to focus on other areas of business or higher level tasks that require human expertise. Or you could actually use AI to streamline financial operations where it can be built in a way to automate financial tasks such as invoicing and payment processing as well as built to detect fraud in financial data. And for any other types of businesses which are out there it can effectively improve your customer experience I suppose where AI powered chatbots has been developed to actually provide customers with quick and up to date accurate responses to any of their queries or questions. Also in relation to this it can be used to analyse customer data and provide personalised recommendations and marketing messages to your ideal customers. AI could also enhance product development. So AI can be used to analyse customer feedback and identify patterns and trends that can be used to improve products and services. It can also be used to stimulate and optimise product designs and test them virtually in different environments. And then I suppose another point I would like to make is in terms of improving cyber security. So a lot of AI and artificial intelligence technologies are built and used to analyse network traffic and detect unusual activity that may indicate a security breach. And in many cases they can actually be used to predict and prevent cyber attacks before they actually occur. Blockchain is described as a digital ledger where businesses can use this tool to record and distribute transactions securely. So the blockchain ledger will start off as one block, then when a transaction is made, another block will be formed containing a new piece of information. These two blocks will then be linked with each other and the link will remain as other transactions are made and more and more blocks are added to this. So let's take a look at how blockchain technology can be used within your own business environment. So the first way is in terms of actually supply chain management. So as I mentioned at the start, this is where blockchain is more apparent, where blockchain can be used to track the movement of goods across the supply chain. So in terms, this actually helps improve transparency, reduce fraud and errors and increase overall business efficiency. Blockchain technology is also a way for producing payment and financial transactions. So blockchain can be used to facilitate fast and secure payment transactions, bypassing the need for tra traditional financial intermediaries, and it can also provide a more transparent and audible ledger for financial records. Maybe you're a business which finds yourself within the banking or healthcare sector, where the likes of high levels of security and privacy is important to the overall industry itself. The likes of blockchain and identity verification can be used to create and decentralize identify verification systems that are more secure, private and efficient than more traditional systems which are currently existing. You can also use blockchain technology to create smart contracts which are self-executing contracts with the terms of agreement directly written into code. So I suppose this could actually help to automate contract execution, reduce transaction costs and increase your efficiency within the business. So as you can see here, transparency and the likes of you know security is a strong factor when it comes to blockchain technology. So if you are a business which operates within this region, you could consider implementing this technology to ensure you're holding a certain level of transparency and security within your own business environment. So this brings us on to looking at the Internet of Things then, or IoT, as it's seen. Um, and I suppose in the simplest terms, I, um, Internet of Things looks to connect devices to the Internet and to other devices. So that, that is basically it in the simplest terms. And the aim of this technology is to create a network of connected devices formed to collect and share data and information about the environment around them. So these things, as they're known, could be anything from your vehicle, your physical devices, to cooking accessories. These things are always around us, and each of which are capable of having sensors to connect and exchange data with other devices and systems over the internet then. 
And as I mentioned then, each of these devices will have built-in sensors capable of integrating data from different devices and share valuable data to make certain changes as well. So what do these devices actually look like? As I mentioned, they're communication devices all around us. So the likes of your vehicle, you're driving your car. Many cars are set up in a way now that can detect the brightness outside and adjust your headlights to match your requirement. These sensors are also seen in the likes of cooking devices, changing temperatures and other areas. So as you can see, the Internet of Things is being used by people more and more regularly and has become more apparent within homes and all around us today. And it's the same with businesses. They're using it to provide informed, up-to-date insights by analysing large amounts of data, where the program also offers the ability to automate processes. And this has actually made it more common within the likes of the manufacturing industry, which allows companies to improve their overall efficiency. And as I mentioned, it's becoming more apparent where there's currently 7 billion Internet of Things devices being used today. And other reports are actually showing, with experts predicting these figures to grow by 22 billion by 2025. So you can see Internet of Things is a technology that is very, very popular with a lot of businesses and it's only going to grow even more so. So let's get a better understanding of how you could actually implement it within your business today. So as a business, we're always looking for different ways to improve our operations and Internet of Things can actually help you do this. Where Internet of Things is set up in a way to optimize business operations by automating and streamlining processes. For example, sensors can be used to monitor and control energy usage, track inventory, and manage equipment maintenance. Internet of Things can also help businesses deliver personalized experience to their customers. For example, if you find yourself within the retail industry, Internet of Things is being used on the likes of mobile apps to deliver location-based promotions to customers while they shop. Or on the other hand, you find yourself within the manufacturing industry, Internet of Things can be used to monitor the performance of equipment in real time and predict when maintenance is needed. So this helps businesses to actually reduce their downtime and prevent equipment failures, having a knock-on effect on maybe your performance and productivity. And I suppose the same applies with supply chain management, where Internet of Things can be used to track the movement of goods across the supply chain, enabling businesses to monitor inventory levels, manage their overall logistics and reduce any unrequired waste. Also, if you're a business that takes health and safety seriously within the workplace, Internet of Things can be used to improve workplace safety by monitoring conditions such as temperature, humidity and air quality. In addition to this, Internet of Things can be used to track the location of your workers and actually see whether they're in hazardous environments before alerting them to potential hazards. And finally, in terms of data collection and analysis, Internet of Things can generate a large amount of data at a given time, which can be used and analysed to gain insights and improve your overall decision making. For example, if you're a manufacturer, you could use these data sensors to optimise production processes and reduce any unnecessary waste. So that's a bit of a summary over the three different technological terms in terms of AI, blockchain and Internet of Things. I hope you have a good understanding now of each of them and you could actually maybe use these towards your own advantage within your business today. If you would like any guidance and support in around implementing any of these tools, contact Profiltree or myself and I would be more than happy to talk you through the different stages that you would want to consider if you're going through this analysis and implementation stage.